Hello, my name is Cal Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm heading towards the VCU Compass to spread the message of freedom. Come join me. Oh, but uh, along the way, let's stop by to take notice of these uh, three mail carriers that we have here. The two over here, UPS and FedEx, these are free market enterprises. Well, the one on the left is a government monopoly on <laughs> first class mail. You see, if these two services attempted to deliver your parcels of mail, letters for example, uh, they'd be thrown into a cage. You know, they'd be threatened uh, with the heavy fines and thrown into a cage just like Lysander Spooner. Well, over here, you can clearly see the state and quality of things whenever government has a monopoly on anything. And you see it rusted, you see some graffiti marks, you see that it just looks like shit. So hopefully one day this monopoly ends, you know, it will, it will only end if you let go of the idea of government altogether. So you can start freeing up a lot of better qualities of services, effective qualities of service, and cheaper qualities of services. This over here is the VCU map. Do you like to know where we're headed? We're headed right over here. We're over here, this little red dot is heading straight right there. All right, guys, I'll see you there. All right, well, I'm gonna ask uh, three simple questions. Okay. All right, I'll ask you both the same question. All right, All right in your day-to-day -day lives, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? Do no. I use violence? No. no. All right, and with the exception of self-defense, would it be wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then last question would be, would it also be violently immoral, I mean, would it be wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Yeah, but that's that's what the U.S. government does and has been doing. You're skipping ahead for <laughs> so many centuries. Oh, so true. Okay, a okay. Of, a lot of governments. Yeah, that's the only way they function. It's uh, not just us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's every. All right. Wow, you guys are already like reached the finish line. Fight Western. Hey, we're in college. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so you guys tell me in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions you apply and use to solve your personal problems. We have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're told that the only way we can solve any kind of problems is the government, right? The only kind of change we can find in effect is through voting. So people vote with their ideas and try to solve problems and in effect elect a politician. That politician, his or her only job is to legislate those ideas into law. And then those laws or ideas are backed and forced by the police at gunpoint. And if you take cannabis, for example, if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison. And if there's any point of refuse or uh, try to escape or don't agree with those ideas, I'd be sometimes shot, murdered. Right? And at the same time, it's even funded through more violence. Because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice, it wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Right. Right? And that's the hidden violence behind government. And that only knows how to solve problems through one way, a single array. And that's through the threat of a new sub violence to solve any kind of problem versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share in, in finding solutions so, to yeah, our problems. So but yeah, that's some saying, so what's the solution? Then? So the solution is uh, to turn away from that that uh, that tricks us into compromising our own moral problems. You know, turn to our community to solving these problems and turn away from government. You know, recognize that the government has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on justice, on courts, on security, on roads, on, uh, on even first class mail, right? That you can't compete. You can't even if the, the services that they provide are abusive and harmful to the people who are paying their salaries, you can't you can't unsubscribe. Like Netflix over a year ago, uh, when they raised their prices overnight, people were like, oh, forget that, cancel unsubscribe, I'm going to Hulu, right? Or, or someone could be entrepreneur enough to say, I will provide you a better service at a most affordable rate. You know, I won't screw you up. Mm -hmm. And so, but you can't do that with government. They don't allow you to unsubscribe. They don't allow you to, to cancel your payments or allow freedom of competition. And so I guess the, the solution for me is just to, I guess, helping uh, other people let go of the idea uh, of government, let go of the idea of politics, let go of the idea of voting, let's turn toward each other, let's use our real voices and realize that we share these fundamental values and we started trying to find solutions within ourselves, within our own community, we realize that we never needed a government to begin with. What if the community becomes a government after a while? Yeah, it, it already is. Well, I guess, well, all right, that's a good question. Uh, but you'll find when, you, when these values, when values are pushed forward, they never go backwards. You know, you look at uh, like the KKK, for example, and several decades ago, they numbered in the millions. 
Today there's less than a thousand left. It's hard to recruit the youth, the youth, you know? No one today advocates, no one no one I know advocates for slavery, right? Although we're, we're tax slaves to, to government, but for the most part when the values are pushed forward, they never go backwards. You know, once you're unplugged and see the matrix for what the government is, you can't really plug yourself back in. You know, but if the most important part that's kind of, that I feel is very important is actually using our real voice. You know, they want to tell us that our voice is a piece of paper, to chat, it's a lever, uh, that you use every four years, you know, apathetically, looking for parking, waiting in line. Uh, but but they're, they're afraid that we actually use a real voice. We find out we already share these values against nonviolence, for equality, for freedom. And that, that we can find solutions within our own community. And we don't need these corporate attacks. We don't need these all these cars being booted, all these extortion schemes that they that they create just to, to fund something that's going to be unsustainable. Do you want to know something? Yeah. That in because this is a capitalistic society, um, but in in this society, the government creates chaos so that they're needed. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. And even even in this capitalistic society, without a government, there'd be no such thing as corporations. Oh, a corporation is this is a piece of paper that protects them for personal liability, that protects them for personal responsibility, and that's back and forth by government, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's like a government is immune from their own actions. You know, politicians are immune from like Governor McDonald from stealing tens of thousands of dollars. You know, uh, they're immune from that. Whereas like someone were to steal that, you know, if you were not a politician, you'd be held personally responsible, right? You have to pay restitution for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corporations don't. Do that. CEO of the Valdez Oil Spill off the coast of Alaska, he didn't lose his house, he didn't lose his property, he didn't lose anything. It's the employees that lose it by lowering their salaries, it's the consumers that lose it by increasing consumer prices. Right? Without government, you won't have no corporations. It'll go back to how it used to be, where people are held personally responsible for their actions, for, for, for their own liability. You know, um, Do you see a change happening? Yes, yes. Uh, or Detroit. You guys know what happened in Detroit, right? Bankrupt. It went bankrupt, right? This happens to every single okay. government controlled city. Uh, this is sort of several cities in California already for bankruptcy, but in Detroit, uh, it's become so unsustainable that they can't enforce their, their laws anymore. And we, uh, they're the monopoly on law, so the cops can't enforce any of this stuff. Like last year alone, 47% of all homeowners stopped, stopped paying the property taxes because the city's no longer paying for their services. But you find in the midst of this, because mass transit is shutting down, there's this 25-year-old college dropout who came out there, bought four buses, painted them to reflect the geographic region of the area. These buses will pick you up, text them, call them, no centralized planning routes. Uh, there's Wi-Fi in these buses, there's music on these buses, there's BYOB on these buses because oh, wow. the police stopped enforcing that monopoly on law. Oh, wow. So you find a lot of creative solutions to, to solving these problems. Mm. Uh, there's, there's this guy right now in Detroit also, because the cops stopped responding to 911 calls, he created his own security company. He's protecting neighborhoods. Uh, and these neighborhoods are voluntarily paying for him for these services. Oh, yeah, and it, these services, of course, are not harmful and abusive to the people who are paying them. They're not going to throw you into a cage for a victimless crime. Right. So you find uh, from the from the, like downfall of government, people find out find creative solutions, free market solutions, voluntary solutions mm. to these problems. So is the government going to go back into Detroit, or are they just kind of? Uh, yeah, that's, eventually that's usually what happens, only because for the most part, uh, a lot of people don't know what, what else to do. They, they grew up with government, and the government is the only thing they know how to do, so for the most part, they, for a lot of people, they just in the end, they just replace it with another government, because no one's out there like trying to retaliate and talk to them, like, look, we don't need a government. But, like, we, we don't need to install a city council, rulers, uh, dictating how best their lives should be lived. Right? Over here, you're only allowed to have four chickens. That's kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah, only four. We're like you're, you're, you, well, the farmers sell you six, but it's like the hot dog bun situation here, arbitrarily out of nowhere. So you're only allowed to have four, and then you have to pay a sixty dollars extortion fee annually for uh, for for them to check on you annually to see, make sure you're not abusing your chickens. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's uh, a lot of different ways that government kind of interferes our lives and regulates our own lives and regulates businesses. That's why you find like a lot of them it's hard for them to hire more employees that they would like to when they're trying to you know, over uh, pay like the overhead costs, you know, but with the insurance with the regulations. Um, there's a lot of different ways that government comes and just control us and to us, to them, we're nothing more than tax cattle. To us, right. this is nothing but a tax farm to them. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, are you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, it's, kind, of, yeah? it's kind of messed up. Yeah, it is messed up, yeah. I guess the solution, this philosophy is uh, called anarchy. Uh, but even by definition, it means without political rulers. Like in science, it means cations and ions, and means without. Mm -hmm. Archie means rulers, political mm -hmm. rulers. Mm -hmm. We can have rules, there's just no need for political rulers. Mm -hmm. We can have communities of preferences. We can have an apartment building complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. You know? Uh, when you when you end the monopoly uh, that, that the state forces us to pay for, that, that uh, infringes upon us, you know, we, we find a plurality of ways to solve these problems. Nonviolent solutions. Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. No, no, thank you for stopping by. Thank I've you so much. I've always seen you, you know, around. I just never...
Yeah. <laughs> no, for me, I feel like I have to come out here and keep continuing the conversation. We have, we do like monthly philosophical discussions and trying to find again solutions outside of the state. And for me, that's 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 the way to go. I mean, it's voting. I mean, so what? Tomorrow they legalize marijuana, you know, or cannabis. How? Oh wait. So, uh, said, listen. So what? So what? So what if they legalize it tomorrow? How long did that take? Right. Seventy-five years. Seventy-five years. That's not a measure measure of success to have finally gained one scrap of our freedoms, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Right. We need to legalize marijuana. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want government to, I don't want to legitimate, legitimize government in any way. Who are they to legalize or make something illegal, right? right. Uh, because at the same time you make it illegal, it'll turn up to be the same way you see like Super Bowl commercials, where they'll, they'll become a cultural drug if you legalize it, like for tobacco, with like drinking. Eventually, so you can't have fun with drinking and smoking, you know, pot. So that's what happens when you're legalizing. But like in Portugal, they decriminalize all their drugs. Heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, and everything. And then it's not a big it's deal. It's not, it's not a big deal. Declined. Yes, it declined. It declined. The disease associated with the sure needles exactly. declined. Uh, all the cities in Europe, uh, they removed all their traffic lights and all their uh, traffic stop signs. And what had happened, traffic congestion went down. Traffic accidents went down. Uh, like in the same way when you walk across the street, you look both ways. You, you have this eye contact with, with the people that are walking near you. That's what happens. Uh, yeah. So you drive, you go to your intersection, you, it, 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 it speeds up uh, your, your commute. You know, it, it, it becomes a more shared traveling experience with mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what happens when government gets outside of, of our lives. You know, when they're not trying to centrally plan and organize and dictate mm -hmm. how best our lives should be lived. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good no, thoughts. No. Oh, thank you so much for stopping by. Have a good one. Have a good day. Yes. Take have a good care. day. It's a plurality of nonviolent solutions that right. everybody apply and use to, mm -hmm. to, to find answers. Totally. Yeah. So, so that's the hidden immorality behind government. Yeah. Cool. Do you do you think do you think it's uh, government, the actual institution, or just the people? Because I feel like there, you know, I feel like government at one time, you know, used taxes to help. You know, we had a broad middle class. You know, I feel like most of the time, I feel like right now, it's the, it's the one percent influence in the government that's really causing those corrupt people. Because the government, it's a good institution. I feel it used. It's you. It's supposed to be for public safety, things like that, right. and you know, for things that we can't do on a broader scale. Right. But obviously, nowadays, it's changed a little bit because of money and corruptness. But I think it's the people, honestly. Well, it's just the people. That's what happens whenever they, anybody has political power. Uh, political yeah. power corrupts anybody. You know, even in the end, Frodo couldn't let go of the ring, mm -hmm. right? But uh, but in the situation awareness of what government really is is a monopoly on violence. They have a monopoly on roads. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on and school. That's, yeah. They have a monopoly on first class mail, which means no one's allowed to compete or provide you a better service, mm -hmm. right? Even if it's abusive, even if it's harmful, you can't cancel or unsubscribe. You know, like uh, like over a year ago, Netflix tried to increase their prices overnight, and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, I'm going to Hulu, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if the services that they provide you, you can't unsubscribe. You can't say, you know what, I don't want those services, I'd rather provide it. Maybe, maybe you can be entrepreneur enough to provide a better service instead. Right. You know, and that's, and that's really the problem behind government is that they don't allow that freedom of competition. Mm -hmm. Right, and so like whether or not they can provide a good competition or a bad competition is really irrelevant in that they don't allow. If you try to compete, they'll throw you into a cage. Right, right, right. Totally. Right? Yeah. So yeah. no. So what? Are, what are your thoughts now? I guess. No, so, I think no. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally understand that. Okay. Definitely. I guess for me, I, we can have communities of preferences. Yeah. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers. Definitely. There's no need for city council members arbitrarily dictating how best your life should be lived. I don't know. I don't know if it's like I don't. I don't think the lack of government is what we need. I think we just need. We're we're coming upon a new mindset, and that just needs to yeah. roll over. You know, it's gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get so far in the shithole that we just need to. It's gonna turn over. Eventually, that's what happens to every <laughs> government. Yeah, you look at Detroit; exactly. they fall for bankruptcy. Right, right? exactly. Got uh, Detroit. I know. <laughs> well, that's what happens to every single government city. Every single city that's run by government is always false. Uh, you mm -hmm. look at all the number of countries in Europe falling because of that bankruptcy. Yeah, a couple of cities in California already for bankruptcy, right? Yeah. Uh, but but outside of that, you'll find people are finding real solutions. Like out of that there's like the mass transit system, uh, system in detroit has collapsed but there's this guy 25 year old college dropout bought four buses painting these buses to reflect the uh, geographic areas he picks you, you text him he'll come pick you up call him he'll pick you up there's no centralized routes there's music there's wi right. wi there's even byob on these buses because detroit's gonna be the new up and up yeah it would be yeah. <laughs> detroit's the new place to be y'all yeah 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 um well let me give you a pamphlet then thank um, you 
So a lot of these ideas called anarchy. Anarchy by definition means without rulers. Mm -hmm. We can have rules, we can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? right. As long as they're voluntary, right? Yeah. And of course, if there's no voluntary consent with the government, right? You can't say, well, like uh, if they increase your stamp prices, you know, the prices of your stamps, you, you really don't have a choice, mm -hmm. right? So it's, uh, you don't really have a choice in the security. You don't have a choice in the people who are, are defending you. We can still have that security. At least they will be beholden to the people who are paying their salaries. Yeah, okay, right? cool. So that's really it. That awesome. kind of sums it up. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, it. and thank you, Boba. Yeah. You and I already share that we're already applying our lives to find answers to it. All right. Yeah, I guess like um, you're saying. Okay, so like with, with certain issues, like uh, police use like like I don't know, violent violence and stuff. All right. But don't you think maybe police are necessary? In many cases, right? Oh, I would say security is completely. Uh, uh, these services are very necessary. Right. But the, the hidden reality of like, uh, behind government is that they have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on roads. They have a monopoly on schools. They even have a monopoly on first class mail. Yeah. You know, no one is allowed to, to, uh, to offer a better service to compete against that, right? You can't cancel or unsubscribe or provide a better service. So yeah, that's, right. that's the inherent violence behind it. It's not voluntary. It's coercive. You have no choice. Like last, over a year ago, like Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight. People are like, oh, forget that. Cancel, unsubscribe. I'm going to go to Hulu. Yeah, right? Right, right, right. But you can't, but you can't do that with government service, yeah. even if it's harmful and abusive to the people who are paying their salaries. But your point, we can have security. You yeah, can yeah. have rules. You have to. Yeah, we can have, we can have security. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers. Right. Right. You, you don't think? No, not at all. I mean, uh, otherwise it dictates the, the, the masters versus the slaves. And that's what we are to them, tax cap. Yeah. For us, we're nothing but tax fronts. That's why you see all these cars being booted around here. You yeah. Know? That's why you see all these new different meter mage running around and... I mean, it sucks. I mean, I had my car booted before. But, Did you? Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it, it still at the same time, How did I, that mean, feel? It, it, I mean, it sucks, but it makes sense to me, kind huh. of, because I mean, I, I grew up in the city and I mean, I've seen a lot of difference in like how much nicer it's gotten from the 90s to now. Right. I mean, it was more of a violent place right. back in the day. Right, but I wouldn't say Richmond had anything to do with that. I would say that mostly had to do with uh, people coming in trying to make things nicer, the free market trying to build nicer buildings and trying to come in and build better well, services. Well, it's mainly VCU, to be honest, but I mean, we kind of, VCU kind of swallowed up. Yeah, yeah, I did too. But even with VCU, uh, the price of tuition keeps increasing. Yeah, right? I know. That, that, uh, that sucks too. Yeah, but you, you look at that because there's also a monopoly in public schools, right. safe schools, right? right. Uh, like you look at uh, plasma screen TVs a couple years ago, they were in the thousands. But yeah, today no. you can find a better version for a much cheaper price, yeah, right? Yeah, the, right? When a free market, we have a lot of competition, the value always kind of goes down. I mean, I mean, the, the, the price of that stuff goes down that's more affordable. But not with anything that's monopolized. The quality always goes down and the price always increases. And you have no choice in a matter of I mean, um, like the dollar in your pocket, for example. Before 1913, there used to be a plurality of different kinds of way people traded. You know, there used to be a lot of different kinds of money. And the government says, sorry, no one's allowed to trade only with the exception of the dollar. They have a monopoly in currency now, just another commodity. And because of that, the quality, the value of the dollar in your pocket today has lost over 97% of its value. Yeah. You know, well, that hurts the poor the worst because they have no incentive to save. Every dollar they hide underneath their mattress has depreciates. You know? Have you, uh, Baltimore and other cities, they're doing making like a different type of currency. Have you heard about that? No, what's that? It's like, uh, it's called like Baltimore Bucks or something Baltimore like Bucks? Yeah, and it's uh, for your local, it's almost like food stamps, but it's like, it's like, uh, goes right back into your economy, I guess. Like, I'm not quite sure how it works, but hmm. a lot of small cities are doing it. Right. Okay, listen, I gotta look into that. Yeah, um, you should. Have you heard of Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. It's our virtual currency. Uh, oh, yeah. It's digital currency. Uh, it's kicked off in the last few years alone. Uh, now it's worth more than the dollar. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and oh. uh, Reddit is starting to accept it. WordPress is starting to accept What's it. What's it called? Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, mm -hmm. B-I-T-C-O-I-N. Uh, and the government takes it because they can't tax it. Right, right, right. They can't steal any of that from them. It's decentralized. No one's really in charge of it. Yeah. It's like peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, so at least it exposes the monopoly on currency. Right, and it right. kind of shows, uh, I guess, outside of the different ways that people are trying to. At least, like, if you try to compete with the dollar, there's a guy a few years ago who tried to do that. He tried to create the Liberty Dollar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. heard of him? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then IRS comes in, steals his stuff, throws him in a cage. Yeah, right. Uh, and that's what happens when you compete against a monopoly. So, yeah, I mean, we can have security. We can 
have currency, you can have all these things, but at least they won't be outrageously overpriced. At least the quality will, won't be in, in such a state that it is now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's and that's the direction we, we, we need to go. We can have rules, there's just no need for political rules. We can have communities of preferences. We can have an apartment complex building that's work 20 friendly, one across the street that's not. You know? Yeah, right. right. And, 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 yeah, and not, not be uh, kidnapped and thrown into a cage and dehumanized for a victim as a crime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's complicated though, man. I yeah. Mean, it's like kind of like, I don't know. But this philosophy is called anarchy. Right, uh, right, right. By definition, it means without rulers. Like in science, anions and cations, without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, anarchy means no rulers. Yeah. You know? I, I do think that there needs to be government, though, to be honest. Uh, okay, what, 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 tell me why. Why would you think you need a government? Because people are, can be really silly. I think and, it, all right. Okay. And, and I mean, like, yeah. yeah, you can get, but you can get like a like-minded group of people, but then you can still get a mob complex, all right? Where you guys can, like, let's no, say okay. we're all set on this one idea for equality, but then you can kind of get in this mob complex where that your ideas can kind of shift with the mob and. It can actually turn immoral. So I think, like, in the sense of government, it is like a—it's nothing but mob rule, though, right? Sort of. But I mean, there is you still there's still people, good people in the government, and I mean, they do change. What do they change? Like, I mean, just in terms of like uh, gay marriage and stuff like that. I mean, it, that's eventually changing. It's shifting. Right. I mean. Do you know the history behind gay marriage licenses? How yeah. it started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it to, to prevent people from interracial marriages. Right, was, right. Uh, and yeah. that was created well, by government. For instance, yeah, there was inter uh, there, there was, in the state of Virginia, you weren't allowed to marry. And that was the government. They were not allowed to. The government but, created but those places. And now they're trying can, to fix they those problems. To. Yeah, but now they, you need a license. You need to ask permission for the government to get married. That doesn't make any sense. You have to give up your money for something that they have nothing to do with. Yeah, but I think in our lifetime that will change. I think that, like... I mean, how old are you? I'm 28. 28, I'm 23. Okay. I think that there's, in our generation, I think there's a lot of like-minded people. I think by the time we're 60, there will be a good amount of people in the government that have a good moral idea of like what should be done. Well, government's inherently moral. I guess in the beginning, we were talking about they only know how to solve and the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. I mean, this country today has uh, kidnaps and cages and dehumanizes more people than any other government in the world. I mean, it does, I can't really say for, for I, certain that it is. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. But <laughs> uh, it's more, more than China, more than more than India, more than populations have a billion. Yeah, uh, because of the drug war. It's not. A, it's really a drug on, on people. Right, you know, right, you know? right. So that's I would, that's the only way they know how to solve problems is through the threat and use of violence. Right? They, they they tricked us into compromising our own moral integrity, our own values. You know, they'll tell us that uh, that like, again, like a vote is uh, your voice is a piece of paper to chat, it's a lever uh, that you go out and apathetically spend a couple, you know, hours looking for parking, waiting in line and hide behind a booster no one can see you in secret and of course when you step out people say who would you vote for and people say well how dare you yeah. that's a personal issue right you know what, what would you say though like you're an anarchist so you yeah. believe that in no government that governed by the people right i don't i don't believe in any uh inherent violent organization and that's what all government is it only knows how to start problems through violence it's nothing more than a mafia members the police are nothing more than, than people in blue costumes <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh the military i was in the military too so i was nothing than a, than a thug in a green costume uh, we can still have security, we can still have protection, but the thing is, they're beholden to the people who are paying their salaries, and then they have no responsibility to that. Right, right. They have, it's not like Netflix, you can't cancel and unsubscribe. You can't provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abuse to the consumer. You know? What is your oh, so, idea? So the idea is pretty much, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to do a video collection to show that here in Richmond we have these values. You know, when I ask those questions in the beginning, it shows that we, we already hold these moral integrity, we already hold these moral virtues. And really, so I'm just trying to show that pretty much everyone does. You know, if you actually use our real voice and start communicating and reaching out to each other, we realize that we never needed a government to begin with. You know, we realize that we can solve problems within our own community by turning away from government altogether. You know, that's the, that's the best form of self-defense against anyone would be aggressor. Where are you going to go if you aggress against any member of our community? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, invite you to their homes. All your friends on Facebook will unfriend you. You know, your uh, AT&T service provider will pay you $150 to cancel their subscription plan. Okay, but what about, like, okay. Let's say, all right, in the instance of like, let's say a big company comes in and sets up right there yeah. and starts mining and 
polluting water and stuff. Okay, okay. And there's no government to say, you know, you can't do that. Right. But, like, and they have tons of money and they hire sure. tons of people. They pay a private contractor, like Blackwater or something like that. What, in that instance, like, how do you defend yourself as a community? All right, that? that's, that's a really good question. Uh, I guess first, I guess to, to set the, uh, I guess the, the discussion against that would be first to understand that without a government, there'd be no such thing as a corporation. You do not have Blackwater, they're subsidized by government grants, taxation, your money, money Blackwater. There'd be no such thing as Blackwater. There'd be no such thing as Monsanto. Uh, without, all, all corporations are, is a legal, this is a piece of paper that allows them to escape personal liability, personal responsibility, backed and enforced by the government. So without a government, there's no corporation. It goes back to how it used to be, where the person, the individual who's making the choices are personally held responsible for that. Uh, and we moved to how it used to be where people will sue if you actually inflicted damage on their own property or on, on to that person. But of course, you look like a, the C CEO of uh, the oil cruise of Valdez, for example, the, the oil spot with the coast of Alaska. The CEOs didn't go to jail, they didn't lose their money, they didn't lose their house. The people who pay for that are the employees by lowering their salaries, the consumers by raising consumer prices. We're the ones who pay for that, uh, for, for their mistakes. We're the one who pays for, for the corporations who, who run amok because they have no personal responsibility because of government. Uh, so, I guess from that scenario, example, there'd be no black water. Uh, you won't have this big, huge corporation. But I mean, they won't exist. But at the same time, we could also have, we'll still have insurance against each other. Kind of like uh, when you drive outside, when you drive on the roads, you're covered by insurance, right? And this protects you from like the, the crazy notion that someone's going to drive recklessly because their premiums are going to go up, right? If yeah. it goes up too much, their insurance will drop and they can't drive. <laughs> but in the same way, so we'll be insured, insured against each other, right? A company wants to come in here, but you have an insurance policy that says, hey, I don't want pollution on my property. That insurance company is going to like, look, there's this is a polluting company trying to come in, move into the neighborhood. We're going to buy out that plot. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay you out like a couple million dollars. Right, you know? right, so it's right. better if we pay this and buy that lot for 200000 and sell it to someone else and to prevent that. Otherwise, they're going to have to just pay you out. They're going to pay out everybody else. Right? right? So that'd be a measure of uh, protection against pollution. Uh, but you look at the, the rampage of the government, uh, it doesn't even it doesn't even care about the environment, it doesn't care about the animals, it doesn't even value human life. The United States government alone has murdered over 35 million people since World War II. Right, right. How has the gov U.S. government mistreated you? Mistreated me? Yeah. Uh, I mean, even me, me, I myself coming around here, I look like I have to wear a seatbelt. If I don't wear a seatbelt, I get thrown into a cage. You know, uh, I, I look around all the cars that's being booted, even walk here. I can see all the rise of these new uh, parking meter maids uh, that never used to be that way. You know, I, I was here a few years ago too. It was very easy to park, very easy to walk around. I didn't have to worry about this stuff. But of course, it's uns every single city has become unsustainable. They need to find more ways to steal your money, Build. more ways to extort you. It's building revenue. Uh, it's extortion. Yeah. I mean, but taxation is, is there's nothing voluntary about it. Otherwise, it would be confusing like love making with rape. So, right? so, you, so, you, so you think we should have. Parking with representation, no, no parking without. Uh, privatize everything. Well, the thing is, you know, you, it's uh, the government has but, a monopoly on roads, right? But the problem is privatization kind of is scary. It is scary. It is scary. But I'm not saying privatize everything. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking to end the monopoly so we can come up with better ideas, so we can come up with better services to, to solve those problems. I'm not trying to say let's privatize this, this. No, let's get rid of the entire monopoly altogether and allow the, the creative minds to come up with those solutions. You know, uh, not not in the same way because if we privatize, it's like auctioning off government. You know, I'm yeah, not right. trying to auction any of that stuff yeah, yeah. because it'd be the highest bidder, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. Maybe who has the highest dollar? Right. Yeah. Right. But if you end up, but maybe you end the idea of government because it all exists in our heads. You know, you can't show me a government without showing me individual people. Only individual people exist. So it's just the idea. You let go of the idea of violence. Let go of the idea of politics of government altogether. You know, and go towards what we do in our day to day lives. We'll find a plurality of creative solutions to these problems. I mean, look at um, all right, slavery for example. A uh, hundred years ago, you tell them uh, the same, uh, pretty much the same example to them you know, with the story of slavery. You know, people will say, well, if we free the slaves, where are they going to go? Where are they going to live? Who's going to house them? Who's going to feed them? Who's going to pick the cotton? It's like, look, it doesn't matter. A hundred years from now, only 10% of you are still going to be slaves, right? I mean, I'm sorry, only 10% of you are still going to be farmers. Because a hundred years from now, agriculture is not going to look the same. You know? Yeah, right. yeah so you, 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 once you, but the argument for morality from that point is like, it doesn't matter what happens after slavery ends. What it matters is that it ends. It doesn't matter what happens after they're free, right? Because when you free the slaves, when you when you end that system of violence, of that uh, the, the destruction, you f you open up a free market of solutions to solve those problems. It doesn't rely, it doesn't retort to to, uh, re uh, to slavery, it doesn't re retort to violent solutions. You know, yeah. so we just have to end and let go of that idea 
we'll, we'll find a free market that anyone can, anyone can provide a better service. Yeah, I mean, but at that point, like, without the, I don't know. That's, it's really complicated. It's yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like something that it's like it could go either we grew up, way. We grew up with this. I grew up with this too. Like yeah. even in the criminal justice system here, we're, we're only allowed to think within the criminal justice instead of realizing that they have a monopoly on law, they have a monopoly on security, they have a monopoly on the judges, on the courts. You're not allowed to compete. You're not allowed to provide, provide a better service. Now, you're not allowed to think of polycentric law, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the problem with, with government is that it, it has an inherent violent uh, control over these services that no one else is allowed to provide something better at a, at a much affordable cost. Right, right. You know, that's not going to be harmful and abusive, abusive again to, to the consumer who's paying for it. Cool. What's your name? My name is Callum. Callum? Callum. Callum. Yeah. Larson. Larson. Yeah, okay, nice cool. to meet Pleasure you. Meet you. I got to run. Yeah. you have a yeah, yeah, yeah. little pamphlet or something? Here you go. Cool. Great. Yeah, uh, I'll look into it more. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to be here <laughs> constantly, pretty much as, as often as I can. So if you have more discussions, I'll be happy to have more.